so pumped. Did you say pumped? I've got six ways that I can help you. Wow! I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. If there's one thing that's massively overlooked in a climber's performance, it's resting. We all know that feeling of being so utterly pumped on a climb that it just doesn't feel possible to keep climbing. The most obvious answer to that is that we just aren't fit enough. However, this isn't always the case and actually learning to rest better could be the answer to getting more from your climbing. It is a myth that to beat the pump, you just have to train endurance more. There's an ever-growing group of climbers and coaches championing the physical art of training endurance, but the skills of rest and recovery on climbs are being forgotten. Rest does what it says on the tin, recovering from any pump that has built up whilst on the climb. In this video, I will focus on different techniques to improve how you rest. These techniques will make you less pumped while climbing, get more back at rests, and altogether make you climb harder. But before we move into talking about resting body positions, we have to talk about the basics. Learning to relax and breathe whilst resting is ultimately how we get oxygen to the muscles in order to recover. And it's this process that will allow us to get the most from every skill I'll cover in this video. When you're gripping the hold, aim to relax your grip as much as possible without letting go of the wall. An open hand position is best as that is the most relaxed grip type. Try also relaxing your arms, your shoulders, and even the rest of your body, easing as much weight off your arms and into your feet. Breathing is also key to better resting. So whilst resting, remember to breathe. I found simply taking long, deep breaths during a rest helps to keep a good inflow of oxygen and also works to keep my heart rate lower and myself less stressed before pressing on with the climbing. So with those in mind, let's get on with the best techniques for resting. Good body positioning is super important in resting as a slight shift in balance could be the difference between a good rest and a bad one. All the rest positions will have an optimal position. The strategy here is to find your center of gravity by playing around with the position of your feet. In this clip, you can see that my right foot is pushing on a smear under the bulge. This combined with the left heel hook is giving me a solid stance from which to relax my body and grip. If, however, my right foot was on a higher foothold, it would shift more weight into my heel hook and also put more strain on my arms. Finding the perfect body position isn't an easy task. I see loads of climbers settling for mediocre rest positions without a second thought. But just because it works doesn't mean it's the best. A good way to find optimal resting positions is by trial and error. On your projects, experiment with placing your feet on different footholds whilst resting and see how they feel. Ask yourself, does the rest get better or worse? Where is the strain going to? Is there more weight on your arms or on your legs? Remember that it's as important to work the technique and body position of your rests as is the crux sequence of your climb. If your technique is better, the climb will be easier. The knee bar is the king of techniques when it comes to resting, because if you nail them, they can make impossible climbs possible. For those that don't know, the knee bar is when you slip your knee or upper inner thigh behind a hold that will take weight off your arms whilst you climb. Some climbers assume that a knee bar is only good if it's a full no hands rest, but that's just not true. And even a knee bar that takes a little weight off your arms, if exploited, can provide a good enough rest to get you that much closer to success. But how do you find knee bars and what features of the rock or climbing wall should you be looking for? Well, try looking for large features like blocks and tufas that you can shove your knee behind. Or spikes and flakes. They can also make great knee bars and knee scums. Small roofs. You know, you might be able to slip a knee under that too. And if you're indoors, then volumes and large macro features could also make great knee bars. When I'm climbing, I always look for knee bars because they make climbing so much easier. But sometimes it happens that the knee bar is either too bad or getting in and out of it wastes too much energy, in which case you just don't use it. 
but better to have tried and decided against it than never to have tried at all because you just never know when a knee bar will be the answer to success. You can use knee bars with or without knee pads, but for the really marginal or painful knee bars, I'd highly recommend them. We had a look at knee bars and knee scums in one of my previous videos, and again here, but the technique of knee bars is a huge topic that deserves its own video. So stay tuned for a knee bar specific video in the near future. Toe hooks. Some people love them, some hate them but you can't deny that they can help with finding some really sneaky rats at times. For those that don't know, a toe hook is simply using the front or side of your climbing shoe to hook around a hold or feature to support your body. The benefits they have to resting are vast, and if you can find a feature from which to get a good toe hook, you can use that to hang your weight off and get a more relaxed body position. In this example, I'm using a toe hook on a steep wall that partially takes body weight off my hands but mostly it's allowing me to find my center of gravity, which will then allow me to relax my grip on the holds. This doesn't just work on steep walls, it's also great on vertical walls too, especially if you have an arete feature you can toe behind. If you want to try a toe rest, look out for these features. Arets, these are sharp angled features of the rock face. Flakes and jugs that you may have used for your hands are also great to look for. And even rounded slopers, if angled correctly, can make great toe hooks. As with any technique, practice makes perfect, and bouldering is a great way to experiment with toe hooking in a variety of angles and body positions. Experiment with positioning your toes on different holds and practice resting and relaxing your grip in those positions. The bat hang is like toe hooking on steroids! The bat hang is a rare find and due to the difficulty of the position, often avoided by climbers. It's basically a rest position where you can achieve a no hands or partially no hands rest by hanging upside down from your toes like a bat. It requires a strong core and even stronger toes. Climbers are usually okay with the former, but that type of specific toe strength is pretty rare. Bat hangs don't need to be completely no handed. You can ease the strain on your toes by taking some of the weight off with a single hand and often you don't need to pull that hard with your hand to make the position feel a little bit less stressful on your toes while still having a very restful body position. As with any foothold, the shape and size will vary a lot. For a good bat hang, the foothold has to be quite large, but sometimes you can get away with slopier shapes by changing the position your toe sits on the hold. Try sideways, front on, and variations between your left and right foot for the optimal position. As with any technique, the bat hang is very trainable. I once bumped into Scottish professional climber and coach Dave McLeod at a climbing wall, hanging off his toes from a pull-up bar. He told me he was training for a project with a bat hang rest and was building that toe-specific strength so that he could rest for longer on it. Bat hangs off pull-up bars are one way to train them, but it's also important to practice in climbing scenarios on the wall so that you get used to your foot hooking on holds as opposed to a linear bar. One word of caution, when you first try bat hangs, try them low to the ground on a bouldering wall with a friend, spotting, so you don't hurt yourself if you fall. Now I've used bat hangs on several big projects of mine and they've made a huge difference, so definitely try and experiment with them on your climbs. See if they work, and when it does, as I always say, once you go bat, you never go back. <laughs> If you're alive and well, we're never ever getting to the Stepping away from our toes, our heels actually provide some of the best positions to rest from. With a heel, we can really get a lot of power through our legs, which makes them far more versatile than a toe hook. But the best rests come from when we combine the versatility of a heel hook with the solidarity of a toe. I introduce you to the heel toe rest. The heel toe technique involves placing your heel and calming your toe against another bit of rock to the side of it. The combination of which provides a much more secure heel hook than an ordinary heel hook and often a really good resting position. This technique is vastly underused despite the scenarios in which to use them being remarkably common. All you need is a place for your heel and a protrusion to jam your toe against. The benefit of a heel toe is that the toe doesn't need to be against anything significant, just a tiny little edge or bump can be enough. 
This technique is really helpful in many scenarios, but a word of caution, it can cause discomfort to your ankle or foot, and if you slip with the heel toe in place, there is a risk you could hurt yourself. As with any techniques, caution must be taken and always practice first in a safe environment, such as a bouldering wall, before putting it into action on harder climbs. The heel toe technique is probably the one that has helped me the most on my hardest climbs, so I'd really implore you all to start looking for ways to implement this into your climbing. It could be a game changer. Heels aren't always about hooking, but if you've got good hip flexibility, then here is a technique that you can use to vastly improve positions. I call it the heel sit. The heel sit is exactly as it sounds. It's basically sitting on your heel. You may ask why your toes aren't good enough for this. The answer is that sitting on your heels brings your center of gravity closer to the wall, which in turn transfers more weight from your hands into your feet. This technique can be used on any angle of wall, but works particularly well on vertical to slightly overhanging roots. There is one downside to this technique, and that is that your heels aren't that sensitive, so the foothold you use can't be as small as one you'd use for your toes. You wanna look for larger, flatter holds, jugs, slopers, big ramps, anything that you can plant your heel on securely will work well. Also, in my experience, the more rocked over your heel is, the better. Ideally, you want to place your heel on a hold that allows your toes to point downward on the other side once fully rocked over. When your toes curve over the hold and point down, you can sink even more weight into the heel, providing an even better rest. The one caveat of this technique is that it does require really good hip flexibility in order to achieve the optimum resting position. This gives another good reason to work on that flexibility with regular stretching. Some good hip stretches for this are the butterfly, the frog stretch, and the pigeon stretch. These will help you with the flexibility, but I always think practice on the wall is the key to getting that functional movement ingrained. And the best place to practice this position is on vertical to slightly overhanging walls. Take it slow, practice low to the ground and boulders first, and then start implementing it into longer routes for better resting positions. Resting is a technique like any other, and if you can nail it, then the gains you make in physical training will go even further. What I've shown you today is six body position techniques to beating the pump, but rest assured, these are by no means the only ones. In fact, this is just scratching the surface, and the physical side is only half the battle. Mental techniques and tactics are just as important for resting, which is why I'll do another video on those soon, as well as more techniques that I haven't even covered in this video. So make sure to like and subscribe and ding that wee bell for notifications when our next video is out because I've got plenty more where that came from.